equals 0.5 is expected value. Okay, so um, we're going to talk about what expected value is and how to find it. To get our brain set in the right direction, let's look at this first problem. A company has 20 employees whose hourly wages are shown in the bar graph. A, an employee is chosen at random. What is the probability that his or her hourly, hourly wage is $12, $25, or $50? Okay. We've got the bar graph here. Take a peek at it. Thoughts on how we're going to find the probability of the hourly wage being $12? Fourteen what? I couldn't hear you. Sorry. Fourteen employees have twelve dollars wage. Okay. So according to our bar graph, it looks like fourteen. That looks like a fourteen. Yes. I would agree. It looks like a fourteen. Have an hourly wage. So then, what is the probability that the hourly wage is twelve dollars? Fourteen divided by twenty because guesstimating there are twenty. If that one looks like it's fourteen, what? How many? Twenty-five looks like it has five. Fifty looks like it has a height of one. And so, if you look at fourteen plus five plus one, our math says that that is approximately twenty employees. Yes. Oh my goodness. Yeah, okay. A very valid point. Now, in a, although, okay, here's my backup. Yes, I overlooked it totally. But do we, can we now um, feel confident that I have the right heights in the bar since they add to be 20 and match over there? That's going to be my cover. You're trying to teach us a lesson. There you go. Wow. Yep, I was trying to make sure that you knew how to make sure it matches. Okay. Anyways, I wish. Probability that the hourly wage is $12. So P of $12, we said was going to be 14 over 20. What do you know about 14 over 20? Yeah, I have mine as a decimal actually. Reduces to be 7 tenths, which is the decimal 0 0.7. Okay. Probability of an hourly wage of $25. How many people have an hourly wage of $25? Five out of how many? 20. And what do we know about five out of 20? Yeah, my brain reduces and says one fourth, but one fourth is also 0 0.25. And probability that the hourly wage is $50. That is a whole one person out of 20. And one out of 20 is 0 0.05. Okay. Five one hundredths. Okay. B. What is the mean hourly wage? How can I do this efficiently? What'd you say? Add them all okay, add them all together. So what am I adding? 12, 25, and 50, just like that. 12 plus 25 plus 50. 12 times 14 plus 25 times 5 plus 50. Yeah. How many 12s are there? There's 14 people that have 12, aren't there? How many people have 25? Five. Five, and then 150. Now, that also means if you really wanted to, you could say 12 plus 12 plus 12 plus 12, get all your 12s in there, then plus 25, you know, that's a lot more than what I want to keep track of on the calculator. So could you look at it as, okay, $12, there are 14 employees. So there's going to be 14 12s plus $25, there are five employees. So 525s plus $50, there's one employee. So just 
plus 50 essentially, or 50 times one is how I officially wrote it. If we look at it that way, then how many numbers did we just add up? We shortcut it, we didn't add them all, so to speak, but we just added up 20 numbers, right? Because that's equivalent of adding all 20 employees' wages. So, do we get some numbers? What's the top add up to be? Okay. So, 343 divided by the 20 employees is? Okay. 17.15. So, $17 and 15 cents for your mean hourly wage. Now, C, is the mean a good description of the typical hourly wage at this company? Does that make sense? Or not? No, you're never going to make seven, but is it, a mean isn't necessarily a number that you actually would make. Okay, it's representing all of these. And in terms of representing all of these, is it in the right ballpark? Is it in the right area? And the idea that it's between 12 and 25, does that make sense? Yeah, because the there's one person with 50. Would we want it to be up near 50? No, that's not a good representation, okay? If you say, okay, our mean hourly wage is, you know, 40 bucks, but yet the majority of the people get 12 and 25, that's misleading. If we say it's 17, 15, okay, you're going to, you know, either 12 or 25, it looks like, are the options. That puts us in the ballpark, okay? And so I would say yes, um, because the mean is between 12 and 25, and 17.15, what, that's a little closer to 12, isn't it? And as it should be, because there are more people with 12s. So I'm going to say yes. Mean is between 20, or excuse me, mean is between 12 dollars and 25 dollars but closer to 12. Okay. Now, looking at doing this mean hourly wage here, okay, and the method we use there is what leads us into expected value. And that is the name of our lesson, expected value. So um, as you look at the middle of your page, expected value is the average, no, do not put on either page. Okay, expected value, it's right down there. It's right down there. Okay, expected value is the average outcome that will occur with many trials of an experiment. It is the sum of the value of each outcome multiplied by the probability of the outcome. So kind of like what we did here to find our mean, where short of adding all these up repetitively, we shortcut it. We said, okay, there's 14 12s, 5.5s. It's that same idea that we're going to be looking at here, okay? Now, with that in mind, let's look at this next example here. This table shows data on sales. Is on sales for one month for each item on a restaurant menu. To estimate future profits, the owner evaluates the average profit from each meal. And you'll look there, notice we have the meals of stew, soup, lasagna, and chili. We have a profit per serving, okay, so how much they're earning in profit each time they're served. And then we have a percent sold, okay, because in a restaurant, is everything sold equally? No, okay. Certain pieces are going to be sold more often than others. So, with that in mind, A asked us, based on the data, what is the average profit 
that the owner can expect to make from each meal. Okay, now, as we look at that, so I read that wording, I feel like it's asking what's already there. It's What it's really asking is all together. Okay, if we average these all together, what is the average profit the owner can expect to make? Okay, based on what we know on each meal. Okay, now, Stu makes 34 cents each time it's sold, right? How often is it sold? Sold 12% of the time. Okay, so 12% of the time, he's going to get a profit of 34 cents. Soup makes 41 cents profit each time it's sold. How often is it sold? 7% of the time. Lasagna makes 64% or 64 cents each time it's sold. How often is it sold? 45% of the time. And chili makes 73 cents each time it's sold, and it's sold 36% of the time, right? Okay. So I don't know if you see where this is going, but to get our, I'm going to say E, okay, E for expected value, we're going to average those together. So we're looking at 34 cents happens 12% of the time. So in order to figure that one out, it's going to be the 34 cents times the probability or the percent that it's likely sold. What do we know about 12%? What do we usually use? What form of that do we usually use? 12% is 0.12 as a decimal. Okay. Plus, what about soup? Soup makes 41 cents each time it's sold. How often is it sold? 7%. What's 7% as a decimal? 0 0.07. Lasagna, so plus, lasagna makes 64 cents each time it's sold. How often is it sold? 45% of the time. Okay, and plus, Chili makes 73 cents profit, and how often is it sold? 36% of the time, so times 0.36. So in order to get your expected value, okay, in this case it's going to be our expected profit, we're going to do the math there. Yeah, by the way, you're going to need a calculator today. Okay. Now, these calculators should be smart enough. Okay, because I don't really think anyone has a calculator that you have to, you know, you get a value after each time. You can enter a running total. Your calculator is going to follow order of operation, so your calculator is going to multiply and then add. So you shouldn't have to get each piece. But if you do, remember you're multiplying and then adding. This would be a good opportunity. Make sure. I don't think anyone has a calculator that would do this just fine, so. What are we getting? Okay. So zero point six two zero three. Okay. What does that mean? Interpret that for me. Okay. So the ex average profit, the expected value, on average, if you add up all the different things he sells and factor in how often he sells them, on average, he's going to make 62 cents per meal. Okay. And that takes into account some of these meals earn more money. Some of these meals earn less money. Okay. So on average, if you make this a money, it's going to be 62 cents per meal. Okay. Okay, so expected value. Taking those probabilities and multiplying them by, in this case, it was profit per serving.
So 62 cents per meal or per serving in general. Now, huh? in a way, yeah. It's the mean but using probabilities. Okay. Okay. Now, use your information from part A. If we're expecting him to make on average 62 cents a meal profit, what is the expected profit for the next 200 meals ordered? So they're not telling us what meals are going to be ordered. So how can we do this? Yeah. So we're looking at that 62 cents a meal. Now, I'm going to use the full unrounded version. I'm not sure it makes that much of a difference. But on my notes, I have that I used 0.6203. You can try 62 because it might put you at the same answer. And we're going to multiply it by the 200 meals because we don't know what he's selling each time, do we? So this is a way to get the average. Okay. You lose the six cents if you use the rounded version. Okay. So I just have $124.06 as my answer. I used the unrounded version, the 0 0.6203, okay? Always a question what Sophos will do. Huh? Yeah, it doesn't seem very profitable, does it? No, considering for two people I talk to, it's like $62. Yeah. And you know they're making more than $0.62 cents a meal off of you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I know I felt it. <laughs> my wallet. So... No, I kind of agree. This meal, I'm hoping this restaurant is not the typical. I don't know, but this is the problem they gave me. Yes? On the test, if I did. Oh, if you use the 62 cents? I would probably accept it either way. Just because if you give me that as your previous answer, then this follow-up, if you multiplied it by 62 instead, would be logical. Okay. Okay, C. What would happen to the expected value, value if fewer people ordered chili and more people ordered stew? Less chili, more stew. What happens to your expected value? Does that make sense that it would go down? Okay, because you do have to look. Fewer people order chili. Well, that right there, that's 73 cents. And 36% of the time. So both the profit's higher and the percent, hold, uh, percent sold is higher. So if you take away from that and lower your percent sold, you put up here at stew, well, now you're only making 34 cents instead of the 73 cents. Follow along up here, please. So I do agree it would decrease since the chili makes a higher profit but fewer people would be ordering is how I have it written on mine. However you want to write it down with an explanation. Okay. Something about decreasing or going down, whatever vocabulary you would use. So I'm going to say it would decrease since... Chili makes higher profit. But fewer people would be ordering it. Okay. So there's some logic to that, right? You sell something cheaper, you're going to make less profit. You sell more of something cheaper, you're going to make less profit. And then D, when you're ready, suppose the restaurant's profit on an order of stew increased by five cents and the profit on an order of chili decreased by five cents. How would these changes affect the expected profit per meal? Mm -hmm. 
Still in this absence, so you do this choice with the camera. So you're using the original condition. I'm sure it's still sold for higher pressure. Yeah, but uh, usually it would be 73 cents, and now it's down to 68 cents, so you lose. But Chile would still be making more money. Still be money. Yeah, but that's not the question. The question is like the profit, the total profit, the 62 cents. Would it go up? Okay, so yeah, the question is about the overall expected profit. And yes, we could mathematically figure this, yes, but that's not really what they're asking us to do. Okay, we can mathematically figure this for the proof. Okay, overall expected profit this is 62 cents. Would we expect that to go up or down? Okay, now, so chili would go down five cents, right? Stew would go up five cents. What's the catch? Are they, if they were equally sold, we'd kind of stay even, wouldn't we? But they're not equally sold. What do we know here? Chili is sold more. So since more chili is sold, less stew is sold. Okay. I'm trying to figure out how I want to phrase this. You lose a five cents, thirty-six percent of the time. You gain a five cents, twelve percent. Okay. So we're losing more money than what we're making. Does that make sense? Okay. You're going to lose five cents here every time. That's sold more. Yes, we're earning five cents more often down here, but it's not as it's let it's a lower percent. Now, you don't believe me? What should you do? Take this equation from back here and change out what the seventy-three and the thirty-four cents. Okay, but it has to do with the catch is these percents right here. Okay, here you're losing. 5 cents 36% of the time, we're only gaining 5 cents 12% of the time. Okay? Is that a good way to put it? Okay. It, yeah, it, it's taking all the details into play. It really is. So, how would these changes affect the expected profit? The expected profit would decrease. Um, for my explanation, um, since more chili is sold, an equal increase in stew would not be enough to offset chili. Actually, I'm going to say since a higher percent of chili is sold, An equal increase in stew would not be enough to offset it. Okay, so overall expected profit would decrease. A higher percent of chili is sold, so an equal increase in stew would not be enough to offset it. Okay, get what you need there, and then turn and look at the next page. Okay. Expected profit, 
is going to lead to various applications. So here we're talking about an expected payoff. A charity is considering a fundraising event in which donors will pay a dollar to spin the wheel three times. Okay? So spinning this wheel three times for a dollar. What is the expected payoff for the charity each game? Now, of course, this would be based on this information right here. Okay? Like how the game win works. The game is you spin three times. You get three even numbers. You win an item worth $4. Okay? That is the game. Expected payoff for the charity. So, in other words, you as a, do I want to say customer, okay, are paying money to play this game. Are you going to get paid back on occasion? On occasion, if you happen to win, okay. Expected payoff for the charity is, overall, what's the charity winning? I mean, we assume that, overall, the game's not going to benefit us in the long run. It's going to benefit the charity. That's the whole design here. So we can use the idea of expected value to find the expected profit. Now, let's gather some information. It talks about spinning an even number, yes? Okay. Let's start with the basic. What's the probability of spinning an even number? So probability of spinning an even number is... What'd you say? 50%. Okay, there's two, four, six. So if I go with the basics, it's three sixths, which is one half, right? One half, 50%. I'm working in fractions for right now. Um, you can go decimals though just as easily. Now, to be a true winner, it's not just spinning one even, it's spinning three evens, yes? So now let's talk about the probability of spinning three evens. If we're talking about spinning three evens, what are we talking about doing? Spinning the wheel three times, yes? Okay, spinning the wheel three times is three separate events. Okay. What's the probability of the first spin that you get an even number? One half. What's the probability you get an even the second time you spin the wheel? One half. What's the probability the third time? One half. Now, I didn't fill it in because I want you guys to tell me, what am I doing with these one halves? Okay, these are independent events. These are three separate events, not just one. This is three separate things happening three times in a row, so this is multiplying. Okay? That was a struggle on the quiz for some of you. One half times one half times one half is one eighth. Or if you're in decimal mode, 0 0.125, right? Okay? And as I said, you can be in decimal, you can be in fraction. Now, what is that one eighth? It's the probability of gaining three evens. What is it in terms of this game? What did you say? Probability of winning. And so winning, it gets me what? Four dollars essentially, right? So, and I'm going to call, I said customers earlier because I couldn't come up with the word. In my notes, I use the word donor. Okay, so if you're at a charity event, you're essentially there to donate money, right? Okay, so we're the donors. So the probability of the donor winning a $4 prize is one eighth, yes? Are you with me on that? So 
but probably I walk away a winner and I walk away up in money is one eight. Now, okay, what is the probability of the donor not winning? So what is the probability? of the donor not winning. Why seven eighths? Okay. If you have one out of eight chances of winning, then you have how many chances of not winning? Seven out of eight chances of not winning, right? The other seven. Or officially, I would write it as one minus one eighth, which is indeed seven eighths, right? One out of eight times you're going to win. The other seven out of eight you're going to lose. Now, turn this around. In terms of, let's think, the charity. Okay. Um, so look at it from the other viewpoint. What could the charity do here? You go up, you pay a dollar, and you lose. What's what? What did the charity just do? They gained a dollar. Yes. Okay. If you go up, you pay your dollar, you lose. So one option is the probability that the charity gains a dollar. What is the probability that the charity is going to gain a dollar? The seven eighths? Because every time I don't win, they gain a dollar. Am I making sense here? So that is seven eighths. Now, what's the other option for the charity? Lose three dollars. When I win $4, am I truly winning $4? I'm really only coming out $3 ahead because I had to pay $1 out of my pocket, right? So I paid $1, I got $4 back. Hey, I'm still ahead. I'm $3 ahead. But so the other thing the charity could do, the probability is that they lose $3 is how I'm going to put it. Okay? And that's because it is $4 minus a dollar, right? That's where my three magic $3 came from. And what's the probability that the charity is going to lose $3 on me? That's just one eighth because it's only when I win. Well, Okay, now, oh, okay, hold on. So put this all together. The question was the expected payoff, yes? That process was me gathering all the information. Okay, think about what we were doing on the previous page. It was how much profit the stew, chili, lasagna, and whatever else would, and soup would make times the percent of how often it was served, right? So now, what are we looking at here? We want expected payoff for the charity. So what? They could win a dollar. How often? Seven-eighths. So one dollar times seven-eighths of the time. Plus, what's the other piece of this? They could lose $3, which losing $3, we're going to treat as negative $3 times one-eighth of the time. Okay. Now, you can turn this into decimals if you want. You can work with that as is. What is one times seven-eighths? One times seven-eighths is seven-eighths. Negative three times one eighth. Well, what's three as a fraction? Three over one. I'm going to say minus three eighths. What's seven eighths minus three eighths? 
Four eighths. What is four eighths in terms of money? One half, which is 50 cents. Okay. Well, but it's on average, what is that 50 cents? 50 cents per person. Okay. On average, they're making 50 cents per person. Now, reverse this thought real quick. I want to finish this problem before we leave. What is the expected payoff for the person making the donation? Okay, so if you reverse this, the person making the donation, well, what am I going to do? I'm going to lose a dollar seven-eighths of the time, right? Plus, and then I'm going to gain three dollars one-eighth of the time. So if you reverse this, it's negative 7 eighths plus 3 eighths. I did that wrong, didn't I? No. No, no I'm good. Which is negative 4 eighths, which is negative 50 cents. So this is an on average. Okay? So if you go and play this game a bunch of times, on average, you're going to lose 50 cents a turn. If they have, you know, a whole bunch of people play this, on average, they're going to earn 50 cents a person. Okay? That's the idea of how expected payoff works or expected profit. So, Monday, we'll pick up talking about Margaret and her charity fundraiser. We'll finish the notes. 12-4. Work to get that done. If you run into questions, serious problems, please ask, okay? It can only help if I know what questions there are.